day 13 video today. So today is my best day ever. Um, yet last night, because of some stiffness I was feeling, I was worried that I'd wake up with a lot of pain. Um, but I didn't. Like, I experienced minimal pain, but it's like I could move and walk, and so that's huge. Um, and also, I slept amazingly last night. I slept for nine hours. When the past night, I think I slept a broken five hours, and the night before, I slept about three hours. And so that just felt really, really good. Um, yeah. So today is my best day so far. Um, tons of improvement, and I feel like I'm just going to continue to improve on the medication, and then I'll be able to taper off, and hopefully those improvements will stick. Um, and then also yesterday I realized, didn't realize, I found out um, that this is Lupus Awareness Month, and like in the span of allergies, uh, no, in the span of a day, um, I learned so much, and there's so much more to learn. Like I read a bunch of articles, I read people's Facebook posts, I might sneeze, um, ooh. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, but I read, I learned so much of like, I don't know, triggers, people's experiences, symptoms. Um, I learned that people's symptoms vary, um, that flare ups vary. Um, yeah, the, the side effects to medication varies person by person. Um, I talked to one person who, after diagnosed and put on medication, like it was like 12 or 18 years, they didn't have a flare up, and which is amazing. And then um, I talked to someone else who their flare-ups like a stiff or swollen finger um, on medication, but off medication it's a bit worse. Um, and then I talked to, um, or I've been reading stories like some other people like have like chronic pain all the time, or like a flare-up could last months. Which is with me for it's varied and extreme. Um, the severity of it has fluctuated, but I've probably been it for about five months. Um, or it could last years, or it could last a day. And I also learned how you could like have a really great day, then like the next day a super horrible day. And so I'm learning about these ranges of experiences, and it's interesting to think about like, to think about in terms of me of, I guess I'm excited to learn more about what my experiences are. And so instead of just being like in guesswork and wondering, at some point like knowing my patterns, and so that I could better navigate it. Um, and then I also read this really cool article I think something titled like, um, what was it called? Like, oh, it's like I have energy and I'm tired and it's mixing in my head. Um, but something along the line of people thriving at work with like fati fatigue and pain. And, um, and it was like maybe like 10 examples of people with lupus and it varied from able-bodied to not. Like one person is like a two-time gold medalist Olympic soccer player. And I was like, damn damn that's all I'm gonna say there and then like another person was like homebound like had a stroke but she was still able to lead her um, her own business and it was cool of seeing like, like there was teachers and there was um, um, filmmakers like a whole range of people and like a lot of their themes were like listening to your body um, making adaptations and then instead of I guess fighting with the lupus one thing that really resonated with me is getting creative and working in partnership with it. So like knowing your limitations and um, not letting that hinder you, like find ways to work around and work with that to still be able to thrive. And so I thought that was really inspiring. Um, and also I joined this Facebook support group and like I'm learning cool things. Like I heard from doctors that heat isn't good for inflammation. Um, but then some other people kept on repeating like warmth but not hot so like from some pains and stuff like um one person's rheumatologist and some other doctor said warm epsom salt baths but not hot epsom salt baths so this morning i took a warm epsom salt bath it felt nice and last night i had like some warm um heat things on me which was really relieving and so i've been learning a lot um and also like different statistics um like one in four people with lupus are either permanently or temporarily disabled um, 37 percent of people with lupus work full-time because of the health effects it's, it could be difficult to work full-time um, about like about twenty one thousand dollars in uh, direct or in, in both direct and indirect health related costs and I think part of that is for, like from having to miss work and also part of those health costs I think it was about like almost thirteen thousand a year average of um, dollars of direct health costs related to treating lupus and, um, and then reading all that stuff and learning all about this stuff, it makes me think about 
gratitude again of just how grateful I am for the support and resources and access that I have because to think that if I didn't have health care um, and if I couldn't get treatment that a lot of the like I would still be oh, I'm still on the flare up but I'm getting out of it but um, I'd be physically disabled more um, like I don't know how I would work. I'd probably at some point lose my job if I didn't get treatment just because I'd be missing so much work. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just really, really grateful. And so and also in the description of this post, um, I shared this infographic on Facebook with some statistics and then how my personal life, um, there's how I personally relate to those statistics, like what's my story related to each of those things of, you know, the one in four of being physically disabled and the annual costs um, that get spent. And I also discuss like my privileges of, um, because like with Kaiser, well, it was difficult at first because in the beginning Kaiser wasn't helpful, so I had to go out of network. And maybe I saw this functional doctor, which was like $200 for an hour visits and the lab works were crazy expensive. Um,